Ugh. Black coffee. All right, sorry. Live from LimeMesita.com and it was LimeMesita.com. Today the date is um, April 11, 2016. Time right now is 9.31 in the morning. Now, I happen to get this question from San Loy. What are the factors to consider buying a dog in the UAE? All right. Uh, just to share with you, I have two Pomeranians and I have two Chihuahuas. My Chihuahuas are here. One guy. Thank you, Thank you, and this is another guy. Okay. Yes, you want to You want to kiss me. I brush my teeth. Why do you join your voice? Hmm. So, I have these dogs. And uh, so, unlike most of the places or most of the countries, um, you, uh, I, I don't know about other countries, but I'm talking UAE in general has a few specific uh, requirements when you're thinking of uh, the, you know getting a dog so let me just share with you a few pointers that you need to keep when thinking of buying a dog here in the UAE all right now uh, just to share with you I've had uh, eight cats before and uh, after that um, you know I kind of gave them away because uh, I had a major transition happening in my life then I moved to having a dog and I bought one dog then after few months I bought another dog, those are both my Pomeranians, you can see the photograph on uh, most of uh, the internet. And then I bought these two Chihuahuas, okay? So first and foremost, what you need to understand is uh, the money that is involved in buying a dog, you know? Uh, many times I get people who call me up and say, hey, I want to buy a dog. And, you know, then I ask them, what is the amount of money you're willing to spend? They say, Lloyd, I'm willing to spend around, you know, seriously, huh? they, they tell me, Lloyd, the maximum I can afford. See, I'm not even joking. The maximum I can afford is 200 dirhams. That is $54. I'm not joking. There are guys who say that. There are some guys who say, no, I want a dog for free. There are, there are some other people. Okay, fine. I can think of spending 500 dirhams. That is 136 US dollars. Now, uh, the normal base rate for getting a dog from a dog supplier is around 4,500 dirhams. That's 1,225. You can get it in Sarja. If you go down for the same dog somewhere in Dubai, I think it costs you roughly around 7,000 dirhams or $1,905. Um, and if you want a good dog uh, from the Sarja market, it'll cost you 2,450. And, you know, a dog can go up to $15,000. Uh, sorry, dirhams. That's $4,083, okay? And then there are obviously dogs that cost much more. Now, first and foremost is the money. So if you find this too expensive, consider this, this is just one part of the equation. The second one is the amount of money you need to spend on its food. For me, it comes up to say 500 dirhams uh, um, a month, okay? That is 136 US dollars for the food every single month. And if I buy treats and all that, it'll come to say roughly, uh, around 800 uh, that is 217 dollars it comes 800 dirhams every single month because i give my dogs good food okay um, not just because there are four dogs but when there are two also that was the same price okay the, uh, so in terms of money okay it, it does cost a lot and another thing what you need to consider is not just this when they are sick you have to spend money and Going to the vets is an expensive affair. You'll easily spend $136 or 500 dirhams every single visit. Okay, you got to consider grooming, which is very important once in three months. That also costs money. And the biggest thing of all, you know, when my dog, um, you know, when my dog, uh, Fifi, uh, you, you know, Fifi is my brown dog. He's sleeping. Don't want to disturb him. When he fell down from the table, it was my mistake. I hate myself for it. He fell down. He broke his paw. Okay, and believe it or not, it was at that minute I realized how much I love my dog. Because he broke his paw, he was howling, oh God, my, my heart jumped in, out, you know. And he was showing me his paw and I was like, I couldn't take it. I held him so close to me, I was worried. I called up the dog, I said, dog, I don't care how much it takes, please, please, I need to come down to you. And it was a Friday, a holiday, he told me, relax, so I relax. And just tell me, is the bone protruding out? I said, no, it's not protruding out. He said, then relax. There's nothing to worry. Even though, uh, he said, it might sound like I'm heartless, but even though the bone is broken, the dog 
can sustain and survive until things are okay. Because he said, even if I come to you now, even if you pay money, uh, there's nothing I can do. Uh, only thing is make sure that the dog is not, uh, the dog is not able to move that area, keep him safe in a, uh, in a immobilized position. So, you know, what I'm trying to tell you is, um, when, when Fifi broke his paw and I had to, you know, take him for an operation, it totally cost me around 9,000 rooms, 2,450 US dollars, okay, for the operation. And I was ready to spend, no matter how much money, I wanted my dog to be okay. So it cost me a fortune to ensure that Fifi was okay, but he's worth it, okay? So the first point is money, serious money, and you need to invest every single month, okay? Every single month, and it's gonna be your most expensive, um, uh, you know, investment. It's like having a baby that never grows up. So the first thing is expense, okay? Money. And I, I give you a breakdown of all the amounts you have to spend. Second one is time. Uh, the fact of the matter is because I always am at home, I can spend time with my dogs, I play with them, cuddle them, sleep with them, eat with them, everything. You need to give them time. If you're not there at home, you're never there, then that's stupid. And if I go outside and when I come back home, the dogs are so happy, they they want to spend time with you. So I keep them on my lap, I keep them on my feet, I let them sit on my feet, I sleep with them, I, I sit with them, I do exercise with them. So you need to spend time. You don't have time. Um, uh, why you're having a dog and I'll tell you this I take my dogs four times a day four times I take them down for half an hour take them for walks I take them with me so the second thing what you need to consider is time okay the third one obviously when before you buying a dog you should know that what kind of dog you want okay uh, you need to consider the size now remember my dogs are small so the expense is small but if you have a big dog like an Alsatian or a uh, you know, uh, what do you call this? Uh, you know, a certain St. Bernard's, you obviously will not get it. Or a hound, okay? Uh, or a Great Dane. Trust me, they would eat more than a human being. There are some dogs over which I know eat four pieces of chicken a day, okay? So it costs a lot of money. So if you are talking of a big dog, remember that you can multiply your cost four, five, six times. Uh, also, uh, when you have a big dog, you need a big place, you need a big play yard. You can't keep the dog in an apartment, okay? So the bigger the size, more bigger you need to have a place to play with the dog. And keep this in mind. Point number four is ask yourself what kind of dog are you taking? Are you taking a high energy dog or low energy dog? There are many people who say, oh, huskies are so cute, I want a husky. Hey, husky is a high energy dog. Get real. You need to, uh, you know, get the dog tired by taking him at least for two to three kilometers for a walk. Otherwise, if you're going to keep a husky in the house, which has high energy, will bark, howl, you're crazy, okay? So, uh, you know, if you get a high energy dog, remember the dog will jump around, shout and, you know, bark and scream. So, ask yourself, do you have the, you know, time, effort, money to have a high energy dog? And please, do not get a dog that belongs to a cold climate, a cold climate like a husky. A husky should be in a cold climate. Don't get him in a place like Dubai, which is like, a desert which is so hot it's not meant to be here you'll have a lot of complications okay especially like bulldogs and all have a research into the dog keep in mind the more engineered a dog is like a bulldog the more the expense because as they grow older you really have to take care of them point number five is the effort there's a lot of effort that goes into taking care of a lot of effort oh goodness uh, you know you you need to make sure that you're there with the dog you give your you know, like I said, you give your time, but you need to really take the effort to get to know your dog, to connect with your dog. Others don't get a dog, you know. Uh, it's not just the money. It's, it's not just the time. You need to spend time with your dog. You need to bond with it, okay, because it's it's a baby. Point number six is if you're getting a dog, don't get a dog because it's an accessory. Don't get a dog because you show off with your neighbors that you can take it and impress girls. And then when you go home, you abuse your dog, you tie your dog to a corner or you know, there are people in Dubai, seriously, there are, I, I can't for the life of me understand, they shackle their dog, okay, in the UAE, they shackle their dog to a chain outside in this temperature, which is so, so hot. How can you do that? You know, how would you like if I chain you and keep you in the sun? And some of them keep, keep their dog in the balcony. You cannot keep your dog in a balcony. You cannot keep your dog outside. 
Your dog is your family. Your dog has to be with you. If I keep my dog locked outside, inside my apartment, outside and I'm sleeping, the dog keeps howling and scratching the door because it wants to sleep with me. And my dog sleeps with me. It sleeps on my face. It sleeps on my head. It sometimes his ass is right on my mouth. Ah, what is this? It, it, it wants you. It loves you. Okay. So please treat it like a family. Treat it how you treat your own son, your daughter, or how you want to be treated. It's your family. It's not an accessory. It's not a toy. It's not an animal. It, you are an animal. The dog is an animal. Treat it like one. Okay. If you have, oh, my religion says it's evil. Oh, my culture says it's bad. Oh, tradition says then don't have a dog. Please don't have a dog. Have a virtual dog. You know, a dog is not to be abused. Okay. Number seven, you need to love your dog. Simple. You don't need a rocket science for this. You need to love. Sincerely love. Point number eight, you need patience. Ah. The number of times my dog is shat, you know, pissed, you know, just, uh, you know, damaged. Even my, this chair, which is my favorite chair, this idiot, this idiot here, Mr. Idiot, you, yes, you, you know, see, so he keeps looking back. Look at this. <laughs> hey, I'm talking to you. Put your head front. Talking to you. How am I supposed to talk, talk to you? How am I supposed to? <laughs> Why is he joining me? Why is he showing you? <laughs> he doesn't like, maybe a bad breath. Okay. And the other culprit is this guy, this girl. Hmm? What did you join me? And she she likes to be, you know, scratch. Oh she relaxes. Just see your face, just see. Sure, sure, sure. So what I was telling you is these two idiots, this is my favorite chair. They they damaged my chair. They ate into it, you know, down where I'm sitting down. They they made a nice hole, they ate into the cotton and I could see the wood. They damage a very expensive chair. Now, what do you want me to do? Beat them? I can't beat them. They're so gentle, you know. So what I'm trying to tell you is you need to have patience. You need to have patience. Lots of patience. Please, if you don't have patience, please don't get a dog. Please. The next one is get ready for damage. They'll damage anything and everything. My brand new shoes. My brand new shoes. They bit into it and they made a hole. Can you believe? They damaged my shoe. So get ready for a lot of damage and, you know, that's that's part of the game point number 10 okay now these next four points that i want to mention is very important especially for the uae okay i don't know about other countries but about uae uh point number 10 do understand that there are a lot of weirdos out there i don't know why uh, i'm not saying the locals but i'm saying because UAE, uae has so many nationalities so many nationalities you'll get weirdos there are there have been people who, when I walk my dog, they come up to me and tell me, how much? How much for this dog? I'm like, this is my dog. He's saying, yeah, how much? You want to sell your dog? No, I don't want to sell my dog. No, but how much? So then I tell him how much I paid money. Okay, I want to buy. You know, there are, there are people who are stupid and it's so irritating. You get even children coming up, how much, how much I want to buy. You know, they think the dog is like a commodity. They don't understand that the dog is family. Seriously, you get people who even stop their cars, how much for this dog? So it's it's very rude. It's something that I don't like. But then again, what can I do? Uh, I mean, uh, I guess this is part of being in this part of the world that you get so many people from so many different cultures. They don't understand that it's a dog, you know, that is part of your family. And even more, which I, I cannot stand, is people say they want to pet my dog. I say, oh, fine. And then they come to kick my dog. Seriously, they actually come to kick the dog. So I have literally had to tell them, excuse me, what are you doing? You know, it's a dog. So this is like my family. You, I don't come to you and kick you, you know. So it's, it, it really drives me nuts that people like this, you know, they don't understand this. And then there are these people who, who you know, you need to be very careful when someone's touching a dog. 
They come to the rock. <laughs> they do this. What? What? So what do you expect? What do you want the dog to do? Like, look at you, like, uh, smile. Of course, the dog will feel aggravated. You don't do that. And then there are these people who, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 I can't for the life of me. They don't know how to handle a dog. There has been this one girl who held my dog with one leg, almost put it. I said, stop, what are you doing? You know, so people don't understand. And then... This is the one that I can never forget, never in my life forget. Don't give your dog to someone to hold if they don't. There was this dumb model who came and held my dog. And when I gave it to the dog, all of a sudden, the dog just didn't you know, try to lick her. And she threw the dog. She actually threw the dog in the air and it fell down. It was a small puppy at the time. Fortunately, nothing. And the poor dog was howling. And I had to hold the dog and she apologized. The apology doesn't work. You know, it's, it's so stupid. So... Please be careful of people because people are like crazy, absolutely crazy. The second, uh, the second point among the four is neighbors. Please keep in mind uh, in the Middle East, unless it is allowed, unless it is allowed in your building or in your apartment all that, uh, neighbors can complain and this can create a very big problem. You can get a fine, you can get a lot of problems, legal issues. So just make sure you are at peace with all your neighbors. I make sure I've communicated to all my neighbors that my dogs are harmless. They know they've seen my dog and, you know, they're kind of okay with it. So just make sure that you're at peace with your neighbors because I remember in my older building when my the dog was a puppy, this lady who was pregnant, uh, the dog just ran out of the door and was just playing around and this lady who was pregnant saw the dog and I don't know what happened. She just jumped up and she fell down and, oh, God, it was so bad. It was so terrible. I, I, I thought she died. I, I couldn't. So... Please make sure that you communicate to your neighbors, you know, you're at peace. Point number three is make sure that you respect the rules of the place because there are some places where they don't allow dogs to shit, dogs to poo. Uh, you're not allowed to take the dogs to walk in certain parks. You're, you're not allowed to have the dogs in certain areas because they follow some, you know, strict rules or they have this religious belief that dogs are bad. So, you know, just respect the rules. Uh, just, just be sure about it. Uh, don't break them because it can get into a lot of problems over there. And last but not the least, make sure that you legally respect uh, what the rules for the dog is. Like you need to get a chip done, you need to get a passport done, you know. And keep this much in mind, the legal aspect is if your dog is not under your control and it bites someone, then you are in serious problems. So, you know, these are the rules that I would I would suggest, these four extra rules for keeping dogs in UAE. Uh, I hope it, it sheds some light into you. And, um, you know, I, uh, you know, if there are any questions, love to hear from you, love to answer them. Um, you know, and apart from that, I would just say have one doctor, have somebody who knows something about the dog and uh, keep in touch with them because it always helps. Give them good food, take a lot of care of them. And uh, I hope this answers your question on factors that you need to consider while having a dog. So, live from livemacedo.com and livemacedo.com, sharing with you points that you need to consider while having a dog in the UAE. Goodbye for now.